Hello and welcome to the first episode of the World Conquest Speedrun. This playthrough will be highly edited, only showing the key events and battles in our journey to conquer all of Calradia. We will be playing as the famous Hohenzollern King in Prussia, Friedrich der Große, Frederick the Great. I'll be pasting a copy of this character in the description in case you want to use him in your own playthrough. We started out building this character in the character creation guide, which you can find a link to in the description. In order to conquer the world quickly, we need to reach Clan Tier 4 as soon as possible using Trade Perk 125 Artisan Community with Workshops and Fighting Tough Battles, obtain a solid financial foundation through smithing, improve relations with all clans through prison breaks and releasing to defeated nobles after battle, reaching level 225 in both writing and scouting to obtain the perks that reduce prisoner escape chance. We'll be targeting Empire Settlements first because of the similar culture bonus which makes it easier to stabilize our conquests, and alternating between taking castles or towns and recruiting or promoting clans into our kingdom. At the end of each episode, we will be keeping track of several stats so that we can see how well we are progressing. With all that said, I hope you enjoy this playthrough and let's jump right in. Let's begin by assigning our starting points. First, we will be taking out looters from horseback with a bow, so we max out riding and bow. This will do several things for us. Gain quick XP for our main level, fighting lopsided battles which give tons of renown, and a little bit of money to fund our starting troops. We only have a couple points left which we put into scouting. Scouting is painful to level up early, so we want to max this skill first to get a good start. Luckily, we ran into two groups of looters for a total of 39, which is exactly what we want. The larger the looter groups, the more renown we will gain from winning and the more riding and bow XP we will get. Once we run out of arrows, we simply retreat to replenish and go again. The first round, we gain 22 bow and 27 riding from 10 kills. Round 2, we gained 8 bow and 12 riding from 6 kills, and the final round resulted in 12 kills for 12 one-handed levels, 7 bow, and 9 riding. We gained 7 renown and a couple hundred dinars. By the end of the battle, we come out with almost no damage taken, level 51 bow, and 77 riding. Not bad for a few minutes of work. We gain 4 levels for our main character which means we have more points to use. The top two priorities are scouting and smithing, so we put four into smithing for now. On our way to the town, we battle several more groups of looters, gaining renown and XP along the way. At last, we come to Chaikand in the Kuzate territory. We get to the last round of the tournament only to lose our head to a glaive swing. Ouch. More looter farming, more levels, easy money. We reach bow 101 and riding 133, and the game just started three days ago. Once in Makeb, the smithing begins. After smelting lots of hardwood and looter weapons, we fail a crafting order for decent money. Without many weapon parts, it will be difficult to do much so we continue onward, recruiting Kazate troops as we go. The plan is to convert all Kazate troops into mounted archers, giving us lots of mobility for trading and getting to level 125 artisan community. By day 9, we have reached Clan Tier 1 and picked up our first companion in Balticon, Seleucius the Surgeon. For the rest of the month, we roamed the Kazate lands trying to fill our party with horse archers or tier 1 troops. I'm not sure what happened to our flag, but it's now fixed and Friedrich can now rest easy. With the help of Seleucius, we craft several weapons to sell, which marks the point in the playthrough where we never have to worry about troop wages again. We will be swimming in money shortly. On the way to Cyrenea, we run out of food and Seleucius has a stern word for us about not starving the party. Not the first time I forgot and defeat everyone. With our arrival at Cyrenea, the Pugio Dagger buying spree begins. We will smelt these down and craft top tier weapons for sale and personal use. We also come across our second companion, Mostiros the Scholar. We failed yet another tournament, I must have been pretty tired and playing lazy here. After completing a low tier crafting order, we come across this little ditty, Satan's Tooth itself. Money and smithing levels become trivial at this point. In Argaron, we find the Holy Grail of smithing, tons of hardwood for three dinars each. The next few weeks are rinse and repeat of going town to town, buying Pugio, crafting weapons, and winning tournaments. After many attempts, we finally win our first tournament. Yay. The only thing we care about at this point is the renown as money isn't a concern. That's more like it. Around the second month mark, we have enough party size and money to make our first horse trading run. The main goal here is to hit level 125 trading ASAP and never trade again. I forgot to mention, one of the best ways to make money with smithing is to have a range of weapon prices to sell. Having all 100k value weapons is inefficient as we rarely come across a town that has that much money. I suggest a few expensive and a ton of mid to low tier weapons in the 10 to 40k price sale range. This way you can clear out all dinars from a 
town. The best place to start horse trading is the town of Askar in Asurai lands. We load up with as many desert and Asurai horses as they have. Vlandia is a great place to offload horses, but the Empire towns can be decent as well, so we stop at Ortizia first. Not the best pricing here, but we can still offload some crafted weapons and a couple horses. Next stop, Sargo. They pay a pretty penny for our lovely horses, and we pick up nearly 20 trade levels in one go. With the majority of our trade load gone, we head back to Asurai lands for more. Askar still has a few horses at a decent price, so we go for round two. On our way back north, we decide to pick on some looters to try to level up our foot troops to mounted troops. To break up the grind, we pick up a prison break in Makeb. There were no high-ranking nobles to break free, so we just pick one and go. This one was pretty close in the end, but we pulled it off, picking up plus 20 relations with that clan. Three hours have passed since we started our world conquest, and we finally reached the end of the first year. Let's take a look at where we stand. Level 52 two-handed, 116 bow, 149 riding, 50 athletics, 276 smithing, 25 scouting, and 84 trade. For our main character, we were able to reach level 18, which is close to where we needed to be. We have four companions, clan tier 1, and 1.89 million dinars in the bank. Let's see how we did on our goals. The only thing we fulfilled completely is building a solid financial foundation. At nearly 2 million dinars, we don't have to worry about crafting or making money for several years, allowing us to focus entirely on the other objectives. I don't expect us to reach clan tier 4 until the third year or later, but we shall see. We only completed one prison break, which was a misplay on my part as we visited over 40 to 50 settlements. Next episode, we will make a big effort here as we will need more relationship gains. We made great progress towards writing, but need to focus more on scouting levels. Until we get to level 50, we need to keep searching out bandit hideouts as XP gain is non-existent from track spotting for low-level scouting. Next episode, you can expect to see a lot more action as we transition from early to mid-game. Battles with nobles, sieges, prison breaks, and more. Don't forget to hit that like button on your way out, and I'll see you on the next episode.